Hey, how's it going, do you solfers? Got a good one for you today. Today, I'm gonna to go over how the variable valve system on your car works and operates. Also, welcome to my uh, home garage. I'll explain to you why we're here now at the end of this video, so you wanna make sure you stay tuned. And yes, we're gonna be talking about the variable valve system, as in VTEC just kicked in, yo. All right, well, jokes aside, this video is not gonna be about VTEC specifically, but meant to give you a general idea on how a variable valve system works and operates. All right, so in order to better understand how the variable valve system works, it's important that you understand how the different uh, strokes on a four-stroke engine that we have here, which is the same in most cars, works. And as you may have heard, these four strokes are explained as suck, squeeze, bang, blow, money shot. All right, that's five strokes. Uh, never mind the last one. So again, yeah, it's a suck, squeeze, bang, blow. All right, so the first stroke is your intake stroke. This is the stroke where the piston is moving down inside your engine and sucking in air through past your intake valve. All right, so for example, as you can see here, we have two sets of camshafts. This front one is our exhaust cam, and this rear one is our intake cam. There's our intake manifold. That's where the air comes in. So this is a clockwise turning engine. So on the intake stroke, on this engine, as these cams are turning, the intake cam turns clockwise, and these cam lobes on your intake cams, on this setup, push down on these lifters that you can kind of see here, and in turn, those push down on your valves, opening them up and allowing for air to be sucked in to your combustion chamber. Now exactly the time that these different valves open and close on different strokes is exactly set, preset, uh, between your camshafts and your crankshaft by a timing belt or a timing chain depending on your engine. Also, I should mention that on most cars with uh, fuel injection, as the air is getting sucked into your uh, combustion chamber, fuel from your fuel injectors is also sucked in with that air into your combustion chamber. All right, after the piston reaches the uh, bottom dead center, it starts moving back up, and the second stroke is your squeeze, or compression stroke, where it squeezes the air-fuel mixture inside your com uh, combustion chamber. And this is when both your intake and exhaust valves are closed. So for example, on this engine, we can see that cylinder number one, which is this guy right here, because it's the closest to the timing belt, is up on its compression stroke more than likely because both these cam lobes are off the hydraulic lifters. So this is the exhaust side, and this is the intake side. And since this is a clockwise turning engine, again, this is the compression stroke because these cam lobes on the exhaust side are much closer to pressing down on these valves for the strokes to come than our intake. Uh, cam lobes. And after the compression stroke comes the bang, or rather the power stroke. Now on the power stroke, your car's computer will send the spark to your spark plugs, uh, usually about 10 to, I don't know, let's say 40 degrees before the piston actually reaches top the center and then starts uh, moving down on the power stroke. Uh, it does this before top that center because that air fuel mixture needs time to properly ignite and explode and then that way it's more efficient in pressing down on this piston and creating power at your crankshaft. Now where variable valve timing comes in is if you can change the time or rather advance or retard the opening of your intake and exhaust valves depending on different loads or driving conditions or RPM, you can have a much more efficient engine and produce a lot more power because your engine will simply be able to breathe better. All right, so basically on older vehicles, the times when your valves open and close, in relation to where your crankshaft is, never changes. They're open and closed the same time every time, no matter what the engine speed or engine load is. All right, so for example, at higher RPMs, this piston is moving up and down very fast and is uh, sucking in a lot of air and there's a heavy current of air entering your engine. So if you were to delay the opening of your intake valve, you would automatically delay the closing of your intake valve. And since once air starts to flow at a rapid rate, it doesn't really want to stop. If you were to delay this opening of this intake valve, you'll actually end up uh, getting more air and fuel inside your engine and creating more power at the higher RPMs. And conversely, if you were able to advance or open this valve sooner at lower RPMs, since this piston is not moving up and down as fast at lower RPMs, you'll end up getting more air fuel inside your combustion chamber and producing more power at the lower RPMs as well. All right, so after the power stroke comes the blow, or rather the exhaust stroke. This is when the piston starts moving back up and starts pushing out the burnt air fuel mixture 
by our exhaust valve, which is open on our exhaust stroke. So again, on this four cylinder engine, we can see that cylinder number two is about to go into the exhaust stroke since this is the clockwise turning engine. You can see that this cam lobe, as it's gonna turn clockwise, is about to push down on this hydraulic lifter and our exhaust valve. Now on the exhaust stroke with variable valve timing, if you can time this exhaust, exhaust valve in a way that it overlaps with the opening and closing of the intake valve by a few degrees, what will happen is you end up have leaving some exhaust gas back in the combustion chamber and basically doing what an EGR valve or an EGR system on older cars do. And what an EGR system does is basically by recirculating some exhaust gas back into the combustion chamber, or in this case, uh, overlapping the opening of these two valves by a little bit and therefore leaving some exhaust gas back in there. It reduces your uh, combustion temperatures, therefore reducing your emissions. Also at highway speeds, uh, or rather highway speeds under light to medium load, when you leave some exhaust gas in there, you practically reduce the amount of air and fuel that's getting sucked in and therefore uh, improving your MPG as well. And as you can see on this car, for the same reason, we do not have an EGR valve. And that's because our EGR or exhaust gas recirculation is done by our variable valve timing or this solenoid on this exhaust side. All right, so that's why you have a variable valve system on your car. But now let me show you how it exactly works on this engine. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take care of something that's been bothering me since I started shooting this video. Oh, this is weird. Why are there so many flies on top of this car? And why are they only in this section? I think I'll go genocidal on them. There, I got one. Actually, I got two, so I guess that's more like a double homicide rather than a genocide. But anyway, back to the subject. All right, so the way most variable valve timing systems in the modern cars work is by using uh, the pressurized oil that's already running through your systems in combination with some uh, solenoids to run pressurized oil to your camshafts and adjusting the timing. So you already have pressurized oil running through your engine to lubricate your um, main and rod bearings in the cylinder block and also up top in your cylinder head your camshaft caps and your camshafts or, or even hydraulic lifters if you have them. All right, so for example, if I remove this camshaft cap, right underneath it, you'll see this hole. And this hole is actually coming from that passage, which is on the center of your cylinder head where pressurized oil is uh, traveling through. And then pressurized oil will come up through this hole to right here on your camshaft cap. And from there, it goes around this bolt and into this passage and down here and that's how it lubricates this rotating journal on your camshaft. And in this cylinder head, you have the same passage on the other side. And also, from this passage, there's also another hole. If you were to remove this camshaft and remove these lifters, there's another hole underneath these lifters where pressurized oil is applied to as well. And on this piece at the end is our variable valve timing solenoids. This solenoid is for our exhaust cam, and this solenoid here is for our intake cam. Now, if I were to remove this, you'll see right there in the center, pressurized oil comes through that hole into this hole right here. And then through this hole, we'll travel through these passages on each end to where our solenoids are for our variable valve timing. And if I were to remove the solenoid on this end, you might see it right there. So pressurized oil comes through there, travels through the solenoid and your car's computer, based on your engine load, will either allow that pressurized oil to travel through this side or this side. One of them is going to be advancing your timing on this side, which is the exhaust cam, and the other one is gonna be for retarding the timing. And you can probably barely make out the two holes where the pressurized oil goes after your solenoid. It goes through one of those and comes out through one of these here. And after it comes out of those holes, it either goes through these holes on this side or these holes on this side. And from here, it travels through your camshaft and goes inside your camshaft gear or sprocket. Now here, inside of this sprocket, there are two passages 
where the pressurized oil can go through. Again, one for advancing and one for retarding the camshaft timing. And from there, once it goes through the sprocket, it goes to the inside of the sprocket, there are veins and a rotor, which uh, when you apply pressurized oil one way, retards the timing, and the other way, it advances the timing. Okay, so one way to think about this is, uh, is this way. So pressurized oil, let's say, wants to retard the timing. It goes through this end, it goes through this side, it goes through these holes to the rotor or the vein through the veins here and it pressurized, pressurizes the rotor from underneath it. Let's say the rotor can travel this much or this much inside of this uh, phase cam and let's say it pressurizes one side. And when it does that, it changes the, the position of the camshaft in relation to the rotor that's inside here. See the cam gears, when they're on the camshaft, they don't actually, you know, one of them doesn't go this way, the other one this way to advance or retard the timing. The gears itself, they stand the same distance from, from one another and on the outside move exactly the same way. But on the inside of these, as oil pressure is applied to that rotor, and the veins inside there, the relation of the camshaft to those, to the, to these cam gears changes. And that's how you can either move this camshaft back to retard timing or forward to advanced timing in relation to the rotor that's inside here and your camshaft and your crankshaft. Now to clarify what we're talking about here is variable valve timing, which is when the valve opens and closes. We're not talking about the duration of the valve opening and closing. And also not, we're not talking about the, uh, valve lift. So for example the duration of the valve opening and closing is going to be related to where it starts on your camshaft lobe the, the peak starts on the camshaft lobe. The, the, the bigger this whole side of the lobe is the longer the duration of your valve opening and also your valve lift is related to how, how high this peak on your camshaft lobe is. The higher this peak is the, the longer or the larger the opening of your valve. Now there are systems out there that not only have variable valve timing, but they also have variable valve lift and valve duration systems. Uh, we won't get into them too much because I don't have an example to show you, but I think you guys get the idea of how the system works. It's usually, you know, they use it with a combination of using oil pressure and these uh, solenoids to manipulate the oil pressure that's inside your engine in order to get this done. All right, so there's that, but now as to why we are here in this new shop or this garage and what happened to the old shop. Well, about three weeks ago, I guess, my, uh, my landlord came to me and said that he wanted to raise the rent by about $600. So I thought about that for a few seconds, but then I had to politely decline. And then I told him he can go find himself another tenant. Then I moved out of my apartment as well and rented this three bedroom house with this nice two car garage. Now this is obviously not as big as my old garage, but this is uh, plenty of space for making YouTube videos. And since I live here now, <laughs> this should also help with uh, putting out more videos, for which I'm sure you guys are gonna be uh, happy about. Now for your dog lovers, there's obviously gonna be more butthead around as well. Butthead, there's gonna be a lot of you around now. This way I get to save money and time, and you guys get to see more videos. So I guess this is a, uh, when, 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 when money shot situation. Wait, no, no, money shot is not applicable to this conversation either. I don't know where I've heard that, but I've heard it somewhere. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor and share this video on your favorite social network, and also check out these other related videos, of which I put links to on this side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.